see my teeth? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. And tonight we have a special guest, Terry Visavati. Welcome, Terry. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yep. And before we get into the topic tonight, um, how did you get involved in massage? Um, how long have you been in the field, and what, what, have, what, did, what did you do beforehand? And um, well, actually, it's kind of a you know long but short story. Um, I've been, I went to school at Chicago School of Massage Therapy, which has eventually turned into Corteva. Um, and I went to school in 1995. Um, basically what happened was I was away at school um, for college at University of Arizona in Tucson and um, I was majoring in exercise sports science and athletic training working with the sports teams there and I decided um, looking back I realized I was kind of homesick so and you know it was it was just you know, real hard to live in Arizona versus Chicago, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> especially right now what we're going through, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to transfer home, and I was kind of looking for something to do uh, before, because I kind of waited a little too late uh, to really start school up, and I uh, happened to be involved with somebody who is in the sports industry and he he's just like well you know think about what what are you what do you kind of do already you know in, with athletic training and stuff like that and so I, I I looked into massage and um, I took a mini course fell in love with it and signed up so I was doing massage school while I was finishing my college degree and um, and it's been a, a love fest ever since <laughs> I, I, really, I love what I do uh, you know, so I've been uh, going doing that for a long time now. <laughs> do you still do anything with personal training then? Um, well, it's athletic training. Um, personal training, I, I never got that into because um, people that want massage, it's totally different hours. But the athletic training, I never actually sat for my athletic training exam um, for licensing um, or for you know the the whole board um, exam. Uh, just because I, you know, was so in love with massage, I was already kind of uh, more advanced than what a lot of the trainers were, and where I was working um, at the time, doing a lot of massage, and what I had, that's what they were looking for, and they still are uh, in a lot of ways. So I just kind of um, decided just to stay focused on that. Um, so my degree is actually kinesiology, exercise physiology, um, with athletic training and background as well. So. And then, how did you really get a um, get your niche with um, sports massage? Then I like, just kind of fell into it accidentally because I was never <laughs> accused of being. You know, I, I was I, I always looked the role of an athlete growing up, but I was never accused of being a coordinated person. So I kind of you know uh, just really I really enjoyed you know when I went away to college originally I was like oh nothing to do with science or anything. Next thing you know I'm you know, dissecting cadavers and doing, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, things with the body. And then sports was just a real natural, because um, I, I really, you know, with the kinesiology, that's where, you know, it's a real good focus, because the kinesiology, it's more than what you learn in massage school when you learn it with part of your college degree. It's more than your OIAs you're, and, and, and things like that. You're really learning about the movement, how to put it together, the firing patterns, how to recognize this, especially with the exercise physiology. So it really went hand in hand. Um, so I just, you know, kept rolling with it. And I, you know, now myself, I'm an athlete, which is kind of yeah. scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you a tri um, triathlete then? or? Yes, I am. I um, actually, I've, I've always kind of been a runner, but, uh, you know, took some time off, you know, and then... Uh, I just, you know, more and more influenced by my, you know, just like, our, you know, we influence our clients. My clients really started influencing me, and, and it just, to me, it became a very safe environment, and, you know, it was something that, you know, even if you don't excel at it, I felt very comfortable, and um, realized I'm actually not a bad swimmer, runner, or cyclist, so <laughs> triathlon, and really triathlon was a great thing um, for me, because, you know, I didn't want to just run because um, my dad is a cyclist, and I thought that that would be a great way to spend time with him. So, yeah, great. Yeah, so. And, and then um, for sports massage, um, is there any certain um, continuing education classes or um, other kind of classes that they should really focus on? You think to really well, be good? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, back you know, back when well, you and I, when we graduated school, back you know, when dinosaurs roamed the land, <laughs> um, you know, it, there really wasn't. Uh, you know, that was before all these great classes that are being offered nowadays. Um, you know, back then they even had the you know national sports massage exam that you could take, and then that kind of fell by the wayside. But um, yeah, I definitely think you know things like. Um, Myofascial, whether it's you know, it doesn't have to be a John Barnes or a, you know, which is fabulous workshops, you know, to get certified. But it doesn't have to be a certifying class. It just has to be advanced education and myofascial work. That's great. Um, if you want to get into lymphatics, that's really great too. Depending on where you're working, um, you know, if you're somebody that is working with an athletic training department, lymphatic work is awesome because you're you really can, you know, that's all of a sudden sprains are no longer contraindicated for you. Um, you know, also things like corrective exercise specialist, um, even performance um, specialist, uh, a lot of stretching classes, a lot of. Um, you know, even you know, just even some other things uh, it, that sound kind of crazy, but Thai massage because you could learn how to you know learning some of these great stretches while somebody's lying on the ground. That's great to bring you know to an event or something like that. Um, so really, there there's so many different ways that you can um, NKT the neurokinetic therapy is a big one. Um, so there's there's quite a few uh, that I would recommend um, now. Yeah, and with taping too, I've seen a lot of that lately and stuff. So, are most massage therapists, would you say, um, have taken classes in that then? And um, well, I personally, I I, I started taping um, in 2005, and then I became cer certified with uh, the Kinesio Tape Association, um, and then I uh, kind of accidentally fell into uh, working with rock tape. I I liked the tape because it was prettier. And then I, uh, and then I, I started. Um, I, I commented uh, one day on on their Facebook uh, post uh, about pregnancy taping, and I said, and they were teaching chiropractors about pregnancy taping, and I said, how about teaching massage therapists about pregnancy taping? Um, so next thing you know, I, you know, taking workshops with them and assisting teaching with them and working events with them and. Went to Iron Man in Hawaii with them, uh, all sorts of different things. But it's a fabulous, uh, you know, add, component to add to your massage therapy toolbox uh, if done properly. I know a lot of people are, oh, it doesn't stick, it doesn't this, it doesn't that, um, or how do I charge for it? How do I this? How do I that? Um, a lot of that actually is taught in the class as well. Um, but it's something that you know, and I'm more than happy to help people with that too. But I have found it just, I mean, in certain cases, just to be just a phenomenal, um, you know, add-on type of thing with my clients. Um, they love it. I love it. You leave me home long enough, I look like a mummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you usually charge extra for that, or do you include it in the service then, or...? Um, a little of both. Sometimes it, it's kind of like, you know, you, 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 not that I want to be the tape pusher, but you know, some people are a little hesitant. They're not so sure about it. You know that. Yeah, you know, so I, I might tape something so that they could see if they like it. And then, um, but yeah, I usually do charge uh, sometimes. So and even even chiropractors and people that do bill insurance often, uh, because it is so difficult to charge for this taping because it's this strapping technique or that. In certain states, they still don't know how to handle kinesiology taping. So a lot of it is. You know, you kind of know out of say it's the two inch roll of tape. Um, it's about 16 yards. You know how many. Um, you kind of learn how many uh, techniques you can get out of that tape. So you can maybe either charge somebody X amount for the tape, and then um, and then you know per you know per you know session of taping at the end of a massage session, or they could come in separately, um, or they could buy their own roll or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah. And what's your most popular color? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> it depends. Uh, it's it's funny. I mean, because I've got all sorts of stuff. So it's it's you know sometimes people like to match their outfits. Sometimes it depends on the race. Um, but uh, lately, it's a uh, few few of my clients have liked the biohazard. Um, it's yellow tape, and it's got the biohazard symbols on it. Um, and there's the the flying skulls is a very popular one. Um, and then also the bright colors. Um, nobody really seems to really care much for the tan or the black anymore. It's kind of funny. Yep. Do they have Justin Bieber yet? 
Oh no! Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen duct tape of that so far. So. <laughs> I know it's so funny, but yeah, you know, it, it's it, it, it's coming soon, probably. <laughs> <laughs> And, and how did you get your first big break into the um, sports field? And um, I, well, I kind of back in when I was in um, in massage school, I was kind of working with um, doing some internship training hours, um, athletic training hours, but doing massage. Um, Bob King, my mentor, who recently passed away over the summer, um, he. Uh, wrote this lovely uh, cause just so that I could get approved so I could do massage therapy for my athletic training hours so um, he was really supportive in that and um, that's how I kind of got into that and I was working with some uh, a local Chicago um, sports team uh, I was working with the Bulls doing that um, and then you know and then you know kind of kept going with it and just you know word of mouth athletes are not so much the team sport athletes, but individual athletes like triathletes, runners. They love when they when 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 you get one hooked, all their running buddies are going to be coming in. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like it's like a, a pair of shoes. One tries them, they all have to try them. So um, it, it's really you know so that that's you know the, the working with the teams that kind of built my confidence a little bit um, to put myself out there, um, and I continually. I'm very. I've been very lucky. I, I continually have um, had breaks, so to speak, and I really uh, have learned from them. And and I try to uh, help others with the same kind of thought. And would would you say it was difficult working with a professional team and stuff like that? Where a lot were a lot of things that you didn't expect then, or um, it wasn't necessarily difficult. Um, it was unpredictable. Um, I I really. Now, I can't say I didn't enjoy it. Um, I could say though that it's you know now at 40 years old, um, it would be a lot more difficult doing what I was doing back then. Um, I was in my 20s back then, uh, and it was you know the pay wasn't really good. Um, it was fun though, and um, you know now actually I work with a college team. I work with the Northwestern Athletic Department. Um, I work. With, I started off with working with football, and now, I mean, even today, I had you know swimmers, I had tennis and baseball today. I work with the basketball team. I work with all sorts of the athletes, and um, college sports really seems to be uh, grasping and holding on to massage. And you know, I mean, even gosh, even from what we used to get, you know, uh, a friend of mine has been the, part of the program there for, you know, 20 years, but even from what I got paid when I started a couple years ago, I mean, gosh, this, you know, they they, they, they give you raises right season to season, I mean, and it, it's, it's, they're very appreciative, where as some of the, some of the professional sports, um, depending on who you're working with, if you're contracted in, that's great, but if you're working for the team, it's kind of like, you, they, you know, it's it's just it's been hard, and I don't want to you know say it's a bad thing. It's it's great. Yeah. Some of you out there might be working with the teams, and and that's great. But it wasn't for me. Um, I I still enjoy working with some of the athletes, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> and and then would would you say with the sports industry, it really helps to who you know and stuff like that, or? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Um, it also helps to have a big mouth. Um, it's a really, <laughs> you know, um, to know what you're talking about too. Um, I mean, and and that's the thing. I'm a shy person, guys. <laughs> um, my friends would be able to tell you this. Uh, you know, right now I can't see any of you, but um, it it's kind of uh, and and even if I could see you, I wouldn't be nervous because I know what I'm talking about. Um, and and that's the thing, you know. Acknowledge, you know, that acknowledge if you are shy, acknowledge that, and move on from it. Shake some hands, get out there, meet some people. Um, go, you know, if it's sports that you want to work with, um, you know, that's the big thing. Is if is what first? It's the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the how. Who do you want to work with? I mean, just because you like lacrosse doesn't mean lacrosse is going to be, you know, a hot thing for the massage therapy because it's got to be. There's got to be a market for it. But if you're in a community, and I mean, most, the, you know, running, for example, is one of the easiest types of, you know, group of clientele that you can get because of the fact that running, you need shoes. That's about it. 
you need shoes. And and so therefore, you know what? Go to the you know, go to where the runners go. Is there a running group? Is there a training group? Is there a specialty running store? And when I say specialty store, I don't mean you know, nothing against sports authority, but not not like a sports authority, but more like a fleet feet sports or something like that, because that's where people are there that will refer you. When you get into a sports authority, a lot of that is help yourself. Um, and, you know, so therefore, if people are handling, if people go someplace to buy shoes and they're actually handling the boxes themselves, that's not where you want to target. <laughs> um, but yet, those places still may have uh, you know, boards where they have local running groups, um, local this, local that. Um, people like to, you know, do. It's a very social thing. Um, even one of the stores that I deal with, um, you know, and training groups. I mean, they've had 22. I, I believe it was 22 marriages out of their their fun runs and <laughs> and training groups. So it's a very social thing. People are going and doing these things. So, hey, I'm going to go and do it too and be their massage therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because most every marathon I've seen um, has massage therapists too and stuff. So that's... Uh... Yeah. And the marathon, this, the actual event itself, like, for example, Chicago Marathon, huge. I mean, it's one of the top... It's, in the, it's one of the top uh, most... It's 45,000 people. Okay, for me to pay, you know, a couple thousand dollars for a booth at the expo, I'm never seeing any of those clients again, you know, that I see there. That's not worth it. But the training groups, the charities for the local, the local people there, you know, because, the, you know, if it's, if it's a charity or, it, you know, like a determination for, you know, American, you know, for cancer or, or you know, there's a couple other local groups here, or even like Alzheimer's, or all these different ch charities often have you know groups that will you know train and this and that and run marathons. And you know, or uh, myself, I train with a group called Chicago Endurance Sports. Uh, you know, so hook up with them. Um, you know, do something with them because then your clients are you're you're getting you. It's kind of a no-brainer. Your clients are coming from. A very specific market, um, a very specific area, and you can be in their newsletters. You could be a sponsor of that group. Um, all sorts of different things. You could show up to their group runs. You could, you know, promote yourself. You could talk about how wonderful massage is. You know, talk about you know how massage can be restorative, how it could be maintenance, how it could help rehabilitate for treatment, um, and, and all of the different you know key components of what sports massage is. Because it's not just pre and post event like what you learn in massage school. It's a lot more to it. And and go out, hey, sure, you know runners, you know sometimes these groups are at you know six thirty at night. Sometimes they have groups in the morning. You know figure out, are you running? Is it in, you know, are they running along the lakefront? Are they running along? Is there a running path near where you live? You know, certain things like that. Find them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and is it really important to really know the sport too and stuff? Um, it is to some degree. Um, you know, it. I'm not saying you have to participate, uh, but you know, read what they're reading. Learn about the sport. Um. They don't read what we're reading. You can't expect, you know, and, and that's the thing, going back also to the education. I mean, just because you're certified in something, unless they've heard about it and learned about it, they don't really know. They don't know necessarily, you know, they, like, for example, taping. They see the tape. So, of course, that might be some, a draw. But, you know, they don't necessarily, unless somebody told them about myofascial work, they, they're not going to necessarily know what it is. You know, they're just looking for a massage or something like that. But if you educate them. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's also going to be um, kind of, you know, really important to just, um, now I'm working my way back around. Uh, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought, sorry. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's very important to just, you know, kind of, um, you know, work in that manner. Um, cue me again, what was I just saying? Oh. That question. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry, guys. I found a connection there, and I wanted to say it, and then I lost my train of thought. About knowing about sport, you have oh, to yes. know the sport. That yeah. was a good one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That was a yeah. good one. Um, yeah, because they don't read Massage Journal. I mean, what client would? So you got to read what they're reading, so then they could say, "Hey, 
I was reading in Runner's World magazine or Inside Triathlete or whatever um, about blah blah blah. Uh, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, you know what, blah blah blah. You know, or oh, I saw <laughs> this new. You know, oh, what about the foam rollers? Or oh, there's this great new foam roller, and you're still, you know, you're like, what? You know, I'm still using this, you know, long white thing, and and it's like, oh, you haven't heard about the trigger point foam roller or whatever. I mean, it, it's you. You know, learning about stuff, learning about the different shoes, um, that's a good thing too. Um, you know, that and, uh, you know, something that I'm, I'm trying to do with some of the continuing ed that we're trying to create is, um, there, you know, is really, you don't have to be a runner, okay? But you should know what the mechanics of running is. It's not just hip extension, hip flexion, knee extension, knee flex. I mean, I know you guys know this, but... It's about really, you know, how, you know, what plane of movement. Um, you know, it's running is a very uniplanar. Uh, um, you're really working um, just almost completely, you know, just, you know, forward and backwards. I mean, even though there's all sorts of other stuff going on, but knowing, you know, knowing what pronation looks like, knowing what supination when a runner is working. So therefore, you know, there's, there's kind of, you know, what I would want to teach you is, what it looks like. I mean, is somebody moving their arms or do they look like T-Rex? And you probably can't see my hands, but I'm doing that right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, are they, are, are, or are they running like, you know, I call it the pigeon run. Like if you think about when a bird runs and they don't move their arms at all or their wings at all, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, that that's going to be a big part of the movement. And if you can't, rec you know, can't recognize you know, if you don't know what it's supposed to look like, sure, you might not be changing somebody's running form, but or or whatever it is, cycling or or whatever the um, uh, sport is, you may not be changing it, but you should know at least what's involved in it, um, so that you can then brainstorm with this client to try to figure out what it is. People come in, for example. IT band, oh my IT band, oh my IT band hurts, you know, and oh my physical therapist is working on this and this and this. Well, do they have an anterior pelvic tilt? I'm not saying that that's going to be the solution, but if they've got an anterior pelvic tilt and they're, say they're, um, you know, on their feet a lot during the day, maybe they're a nurse um, and, and they're on their feet a lot, they're standing all day long and they've got this anterior pelvic tilt. It's not necessarily that they're, they're, IT band hurts just from running. It's probably hurting from all sorts of, you know, the other 80% of their day or whatnot. So, you know, different things like that. Same with, you know, all these different sports injuries. Yep. And um, when you're actually giving them a treatment and stuff, do you, um, what kind of things do they talk about? Do they like talking about this, their sport and stuff? Or Some do. Yeah. Some love to. It's kind of funny. Um, you know, any, you know, a lot of, a lot of, like my college athletes, they're kind of, you know, half and half. I mean, some of them just like to talk, talk about this, you know, you know what's going on. Um, a lot of them just are kind of, you know, just talking about whatever else is going on in life. Um, some of my, some of my, you know, my everyday athletes, um, where they're not necessarily doing it for school or professionally. Like they're the runners or the triathletes or the you know things like that or even even the average you know the person in the MMA or the you know that are just training for karate or whatever, um, you know they might if they've got something coming up like a race or something like that they might have that anxiety that anxious nervous um, energy so it might be good for them to talk about or they might want to talk about um, you know other things so so yeah you know often. I kind of have this um, now. Now, don't judge, but I kind of have this thing with um, with massage. Um, you know, a couple a couple ways I phrase massage. Um, one of which is, it's kind of like how there's the rules of dating: first date, second date, third date. I know you're not dating your clients, okay? But <laughs> it's the same thing with massage. You know, like a first date, first date massage, first time massage. You're getting to know the client. Second time, is the magic still there? You know, uh, I mean, they came back, you know, it, we, oh, it was such a great first massage. Is the magic still there? Okay, third time massage. Well, third date gets a little more intimate, okay? I'm not saying you're getting more intimate per se, but you're getting more involved in the third massage. Um, that's when, that's, that, they're your client now. 
I mean, they may reg their regular massages may be, you know, once a month, maybe once every four months, but they're your client now. That's the third massage. Um, and now, now it's kind of like now you're working with them. I mean, don't roll out the red. I mean, sure, you know, welcome them. You know, do what you can the first time that they come in, but you know, now they're in. They're you know, talk to them about treatment plan. Talk to them about this and that. Um, sometimes you can kind of skip over, you know, to the second or third, just because you know maybe somebody's referred them or you've met them at an event that you were working at. Um, a lot of places, a great thing to do is a recovery day event where you know people can come see you, or you can maybe work with some, a, a local, you know, local store or a local gym or something like that. Where hey, there was just a big race in town. Now the people that are local that belong to that gym or belong to the this or whatever you are working with, they can come in. They can get you know a little massage, you know, ten minutes or five minutes, and you promote, you talk about what's going on, um, you know, so different things like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, clients, you know, they they will you know get involved, um, and and I I kind of also, you know, so it's kind of there is a level of intimacy because they they really rely on you, um, you know, and and not every massage is going to be where you're, you know, like I, I like to call it forensics massage where you're really searching for a problem. I mean, some of it might just be, hey, I have muscle soreness. Some of it might be, hey, I still have this muscle, you know, this pain now. It's no longer muscle soreness. Let's figure it out. Is it because, it, is my knee bothering me? Okay, we had the MRI, there's nothing going on. Or, you know, it, it, so therefore, is it a hip that's not, you know, a glute, you know, gluteus medius that's not firing, and so therefore you have more p pressure into the knee, or, you know, so trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so there is going to be a lot more communication um, quite often. <clears throat> and, and recently there's been um, some articles and stuff about icing and stuff like that, that it's not as good as back in the day. I mean, are athletes still using ice? Then, absolutely, or? absolutely. Um, I mean, today, you know, in the athletic training room, you know, it, 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 North, I was at Northwestern today, um, everybody's icing. Um, and, and that's the thing. You know, you can open up an article, you know, the paper, and it, it's, it's who's doing the study. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, me as an athlete, ice feels good. You know, I like the idea of cooling something down. Um, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But it's, it's, yeah, I know there's, there's all sorts of, but again, it's, it's who's doing the study and, you know, tomorrow you might read something about how great it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of say I agree to disagree with something, with some of that stuff. Um, you know, I think, you know, it's, as long as people are still getting positive response to it, I don't think it's the be-all, end-all. I never have. Um, but I, I think it, it does it does generally um, help to do certain things with with certain aspects of uh, sports and sports injuries. Yep, and at the um, Summer Olympics, I even saw marathon runners actually wearing ice vests and stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, is that common? Have you seen that too and stuff? So yeah, yeah. I mean, we. I mean, you know, in in certain uh, facilities. I mean, in our training facility, we've all, we've got the ice machine. Um, we've got the bags. We're stra You know, putting ice around them. You know, it's like you know, with the saran wrap, and you wrap them um, and then send them on their way. Or there's the ice like packs, the ice vests, all sorts of things. We've you know the cryotherapy tubs. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, for, for a real, if you're really in an athletic training, uh, room, you're really going to see a lot of that. You're going to see everything, you know, paraffin treatments, you're going to see, um, you know, hot treatments. Um, a big thing now is also the recovery boots, um, and things like that, which are, are compression. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, a cylinder of compression. Um, and and things like that that'll um, give you air pressure to kind of compress and then it releases and it compresses and releases almost almost like if you use in conjunction with massage it'll kind of like continue the massage in a in a manner of speaking. Yep. And um, what is your favorite um, sporting event or or, um, or athlete and stuff to actually massage? Then I mean, running uh, marathons or oh boy. Um, I don't know. I ha that's a good question. Um, I don't have a favorite per se. Um, 
I, I, I can really tell you. Um, the most complicated, <laughs> um, some of the more complicated, I mean, because they're not necessarily injured, are some of the triathletes. Um, because you really have to figure out, uh, you know, because if you tweak one thing, you got to tweak a couple other things because you're dealing with three sports. Um, they don't tend to be injured as often um, unless they're overtraining in one sport, but because of the cross training, they don't seem to be injured per se. But you you might be dealing with a lot of like, oh, this kind of nagging issue or that nagging issue, but not necessarily a specific injury. Yeah, and do you think there's a lot of competitive competitiveness um, with um, sports massage therapists out there? Um, not not. I mean, I live in a big city. Um, so on one level, you would think we would have um, competition, but on the other level, I, we really don't. Um, I could see maybe in a smaller community, um, you know, if, if you're in a small community and there's, you know, one local running, running slash triathlon store and there's, you know, 25 people um, that are vying for attention of, a, of the, these, you know, this small group of athletes, yeah, absolutely. Um, but really, you know, it's it's about finding, you know, what are you good at? And and trust me, there's plenty in most environments. There's plenty of athletes to go around. I mean, I I myself at my office, I have three other therapists that work for me, um, and I mean, and they're, you know, they're seeing clients pretty regularly. Um, you know, and it's not that we only see athletes. Um, I mean, of course, I. I, you know, don't turn people away, but, uh, you know, unless obviously for a reason, but there's, you know, that's our, that's just happens to be our niche. You know, it, it's kind of, um, you know, I, I, I focused um, my attention early on with sports massage. Of course, I have plenty of other clients as well, um, but it, it's a great, it's a great market. I mean, it really is. I mean, the, you know, like I said before, you know, you kind of find the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the how, and, you know, it's, you can, you know, I mean, all of your education that you've already had can, you know, help you with that. Whether it's pregnancy massage, myofascial work, all of that will help you with with working with sports. Yep. And and then you mentioned earlier about um, that you're going to be teaching CE classes and stuff. So what kind of things are you working on for those? Um, well, I am teaching at the AMTA Illinois uh, convention in March, and I'm teaching, um, it's called Passive Stretch. Um, it's like an east to west passive stretch class, simply because it's drawing from a lot of Thai massage and Shiatsu massage techniques, uh, along with your general sports massage techniques, um, or sports massage stretches, rather, I should say. Um, <clears throat> but it's kind of teaching, you know, I mean, think about it. You're working, you know, maybe you're five foot tall. And you're trying to work on a seven foot tall basketball player. How are you going to stretch their hamstrings? <laughs> you have to stand on a table, you know. So, so that that's kind of what that class is. Uh, but I've taught a lot of, um, you know, injury classes, taping with injuries, um, you know, or or not necessarily injuries, but you know, that nagging chronic hamstring strain or the IT band issues. Um, and you know how to massage and work with that plus stretching. Um, I've got some you know coming down the pipeline there's like I said there's some other uh, more um, running specific like you know where it's going to be kind of a component of you know teaching you about the form of running but then also how to work with um, certain aspects. So so I'm working with a couple people. Um, I also um, after Bob King passed away um, we have a friend of mine and I um, actually had the uh, benefit of having um, all of his, those of you that know him, he was fabulous, and, but we have all of his continuing education material, so we're kind of looking to um, revise and revive um, some of his material as well, um, just because it was just, it's such a fabulous, I mean, it's, you know, so many people were touched by his work um, that, you know, I think it's a great way to, you know that, and also maybe pay homage to him in a way. So, um, but it's it's amazing. You know, just some of the you know just you know just kind of reworking certain things. You know, classes that kind of draw from a little bit of all these different classes. You know, some myofascial work, but also sports specific, or you know, broaden it. Um, you know, and things like that. So. Yep. <clears throat> and then, what is the most difficult injuries that you've worked with them? Um, the most difficult tend to be the ones where it's not really an injury um, per se, but it's kind of a muscle imbalance um, where you're working, you know, because it's kind of like 
you're trying to build this to you know have somebody build this muscle up and you're trying to work on this and and then um, you know but they're also you know not necessarily oh they're they spend you know most of the day in the car they're a pharmaceutical sales rep but they're you know or they're refusing to you know so they're in the car all the time and they're refusing to you know make certain changes so th that's very difficult um, or or so, you know just some some of the hidden um, you know where where in a way you feel like you're chasing pain um, trying to narrow it down um, and like I said before sometimes it, it's like forensics but then when you finally nail it um, then it's great um, you know so so like like I said before sometimes some of the more complicated um, sports like a like a triathlon because you're dealing with other components you're not just dealing with running biking and swimming you have to deal with the equipment I mean on a bike is does somebody have you know besides the form of running do the, does this person on their bike, or is it a proper bike fit? And it's not just about sitting on your bike and, oh, do my toes touch the ground? It's about, I mean, some people are on their bike for, you know, eight hours, I mean, during a race, so, or more. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and what are some of the um, easier things that you've treated over the time that you really think you've got down pat? Um, I mean, really, you know, as... as I mean, easier. It, it's it, it depends. It's all it's all kind of client focused. I mean, it, it depends on the client. Um, you know, so I mean, hamstrings, IT bands. I mean, those are usually pretty pretty easy to really kind of you know zone in on. Um, to, you know, kind of you know as far as uh, recommending certain self care types of treatments and things like that. Um, I know plantar fasciitis tends to you know be a big problem with people. Uh, but depending on you know if you can get somebody to alter some of their mechanics and things like that, then then you know there's some I've got some great protocols that I can work with with that as long as you know somebody's willing to be a participant there, um, you know and and that's the thing you know a lot of a lot of injuries a lot of sports injuries can be um, be you know prevented I mean it you know my friends here in Chicago tend to hate me because uh, I I predicted Derek Rose's uh, Actually, kind of both of his knee injuries, um, <laughs> but you know, and, and and that's the thing. I mean, it, it's kind of um, you know, he wasn't rehabbed properly, and and you know, yeah, it's a different knee, but you know, if if somebody's rehabbed properly, um, and they don't just you know rehab one area and this and that, it, it's going to be a it's it's going to be a big um, factor, um, and and you know. A, an ankle sprain. No mat. You could be. You could be Superman, and an ankle sprain. You're not going to return, even if it's minor, in four days. Okay, it's probably going to take four weeks. You know. So I mean, th things like that. I mean, just make. You know, being smart about it, um, and and encouraging your clients because people trust me. You know, people get down on things. Um, they get really down if they can't run or they can't. You know, I mean, my gosh, certain it asks, certain injuries are are you can't even walk, so it's it's very difficult. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, chronic, you know, some chronically tight hamstrings, um, IT band, um, you, you know, some piriformis issues. Those are usually pretty easy um, to deal with at some point. Yeah, and with uh, college athletes, especially and stuff, do you think um, you see them? Um, actually doing the sport even though they shouldn't be because they're so injured and stuff just because they want to be seen by the professional teams and stuff or um we're I mean at least as far as we go um, over at Northwestern we're very lucky um, in the sense of I mean sure they've all they've all kind of said you know and you can tell but that they've played injured but um, you know their training department is pretty good where they're they're yanking them um, I mean even today you know a couple of the athletes um, you know they're not playing yet. They're and they're still in their off season, but um, you know the athletic trainers are actually even telling them that you know one of them um, I was overhearing. You know she's like, no, I you're not going to do the workout um, tomorrow. She's like, I want you to do this, this, and this instead. She's like, we got to get this under control. She's like, otherwise you're missing your first meet of the year. Um, you know, so it, it, people are pretty proactive. Um, you know, I mean. We're getting scrutinized. I mean, Northwestern is getting scrutinized right now because of um, some of you may know about this, but one of the football players has presented um, something where they want to try to unionize student athletes. Um, part of it is because of um, 
you know, injuries. Um, I mean, because if, if you lose your scholarship and because you have an injury, um, you know, I mean, not many people can afford to still pay for their education in Northwestern, as an example. Um, not many people can pay for their education anywhere if they weren't planning on it. Um, and then also you have to look at the concussion issues, um, the, you know, with the concussions and stuff like that. You know, that's something that, you know, it's like a car accident. Many of you guys have worked with people with motor vehicle accidents. You know, if insurance is paying for that, they want somebody to sign off as soon as possible that that person's okay, regardless of the injury, so they could stop paying on it. And, you know, somebody gets a concussion, you know, and, and a, as a student athlete, you know, great, they graduate with a, you know, a college degree, but, you know, somewhere along the lines, maybe they can no longer work because of some injury they have, or this or that, so what happens? So, um, so yeah, it's, um, it doesn't help them any to continue playing, because if they do continue playing and they do get even more hurt, um, it's not as much like that in the professional arena. Um, but yeah, they do want to get seen, um, but you know, it's kind of that thing where they might get seen, but they're, you know, it, it's, if they get, if they're seen and they're hurt, um, that's, that's also not great. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, who do massage therapists usually answer to? I mean, is it the athletic trainers, doctors, yeah. players? Yeah, I, um, it, it, at least as far as, um, myself at Northwestern, I mean, you know, I pretty much go about my business, but, um, like, they... Uh, they call me, they tell me, because it's not like I'm um, full-time employment or anything like that. I have a massage office and uh, where I, I am most of the time. Um, but, you know, it's basically, you know, I have, you know, several hours a week that I can go in or, you know, if there's like a big, like there's a big swim meet um, in actually in Minnesota. Um, you know, college, it's the Big Ten, you know, swim and blah, blah, blah. So the girl, the girls swim team, um, I think left today because um, it's a four-day event. So they left today. So we did like a kind of a you know preparing them, getting them all ready and stuff like that. Um, when was I there? I was there on uh, Saturday. And so we you know, we were with them for like you know three four hours. I actually had a couple massage therapists. So it depends on what's going on. Sometimes it's post game. Um, like my a couple of my baseball players or the baseball team, they had um, they were away over the weekend. Um, they had some you know preseason games, and um, you know that went into a lot of extra innings and things like that. So yeah, so we were, I was called in to to work on a few of them um, that were you know kind of took a beating and and things like that. So. Yep. And then, um, do you have to kind of listen to the athletic trainers in a way too about certain areas to focus on and stuff, or do? Um, you I'm not micromanaged too badly. Not that that would be micromanaging, but like for example, um, you know, sometimes it's it's like yeah, you know, the sometimes especially for post event, the athlete pretty much knows. Oh, my hamstrings took a beating, or this or that. But if there is an actual injury that they're working on, they may tell the the um, trainer may tell me to avoid an area or actually focus on an area. Um, you know, if if they happen to be around, I mean, they're not always there. Um, you know, but it, it's, and, and the athlete typically would know too. Um, but yeah, there's, there, you know, like a couple weeks ago I was working on one of the, um, basketball players and, um, because he was going to be receiving more treatment on his knee, I was avoiding that because they were going to be doing a lot of stim and things like that. So we just decided to avoid that. Um, but, uh, you know, what we were, what I found then I, you know, I reported back to the trainer saying, Hey, you know what, um, you know, because his MRI didn't have anything and all that, so it's not like he really had something specific with the knee, but I was explaining, you know, how his hip was really tight, so, you know, now we're really focusing in on his hip. So, um, you know, because of, um, you know, his knee, the way the way he transfers his weight. So, so yeah, they listen to, I mean, you know, they're, they're really supportive, they look at me as, you know, they're, you know, they're, I'm their colleague, um, so it, it's, it's really great, uh, in that situation. Yep, and, and then, um, when you, um, massage for the college teams and also for the professional teams in the past, do you have an actual place where you go to, or do you just have to set up somewhere then, or? Um, typically, um, I'm in the training room, um, so there's a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, around me. Today, pretty much, um, that's where I was, you know, for about four hours, you know, half-hour massages. Um, you know, everybody's, they're, 
you know, I mean, the girls, they're usually in, like, a sports bra and shorts. The guys are usually just in shorts or whatever. Um, so it's not necessarily, like, your typical massage. Um, more recently with some of the pro teams, um, I'm no longer under contract with any of them, but during um, some of the lockouts for the local sports teams, um, that's when I, I'll see a lot of those athletes um, more regularly than I normally would. Um, so uh, it's because I get referred to. So um, they'll, I, I make sure they come to me because it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not running around. I, I, I did my, you know, going to them <laughs> kind of thing. So I, I prefer people coming to me, um, or the training room. It's, a, it's a lot easier. And, and that, yeah, there's been times, um, like with the swimmers, we had to set up someplace else just because the training room was kind of full. So, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, there's so many sports going on. Sometimes, uh, you know, we run out of space. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then for athletes, have you noticed if they, um, a lot of them have like the no pain, no gain kind of syndrome kind of thing too? Or oh yes, um, you know, and 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 whether it's whether it's the college athletes, the pro athletes, or you know the the people like us uh, athletes, um, you know, a lot of people they believe in the no pain, no gain. So I try to explain to them. There's a difference between pain and soreness. Soreness, great, and, you know, unless it gets out of hand. But pain, pain's your body saying, "Hey, stop doing that." <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's 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 you know, and I hate the whole on a scale of one to ten. You know, I mean, I tell clients if they tell me they're a ten, I'm like, oh my gosh, we gotta call nine one one. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not qualified to deal with a ten. <laughs> and and they're okay. So my clients know they can come in with at about a six or a seven. Um, if a client calls and says, "Hey, you know, um, my back went out," oh, well, I'll ask them where it went, and then I'll say, you know, they'll be like, "Oh, well, ha ha," you know, and and I'll say, "Okay, are you taking anything for it?" If the client says, "No, should I be?" I said, "Oh, perfect." Um, if they say, "Oh, you know," um, no, I, I, or, yeah, I'm taking Vicodin. I'll say, oh, well, what did your doctor say? Or something like that. Um, you know, because then I say, you know, if you're taking Vicodin for something you, and you're self-prescribing or, or whatever the case may be, or they're like, oh, it was bad enough where I needed to take all sorts of medication or, or yeah, no pain, no gain. Um, you know, I want to, I want to know. I want to, I want to explain to them. I'm not, I'm not the ethics police with what they do on their own. But, um, you know, lay off of it, you know, let's see, come on in. Or if it is, uh, okay, um, you know, they're wincing in pain as I'm trying to stretch them and they're, no, keep going, it's going to feel better. Uh, you know, well, you know, now we're dealing with something, you know, and, and if they're not feeling better after a couple massages and we're still working on the same thing, they got to go see a doctor. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people aren't into the, you know, doctors or this or that, whatever the case may be, but I am a massage therapist. I'm not a magician. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not curing you. Okay. And, and that's the thing. I mean, if this is, you know, before it gets too bad, I want to know what it is. I want to, you know, so I explain, you know, I want to most, I want to be the most effective therapist I can be. I really want to be able to help you. So I really need to know what's going on here. So therefore, you need to go get this checked out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the no pain, no gain. I understand, you know. So I try to talk to people to see what level they are, you know, as far as are they like hardcore no pain, no gain, where they're, you know, I mean, they're in Fight Club, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or, you know, or 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 are they being, you know, like if if they're saying uh, if. You know, I'll joke around with them and I'll say, okay, if I, if you were on a scale of, you know, they tell me they're, you know, a seven on a scale of one to ten, or, or I'm sorry, a three on a scale of one to ten with pain, and then I say, okay, use a word to describe it, and they say it's excruciating. I ask them, if you were a ten, what word would you use then? If three is excruciating, <laughs> so you know, I, I really want to know, um, and, and that comes with time. Sometimes when you get to know your clients. Um, and and you you understand that some of them are just pushing past that threshold of you know and then some people stay within like pain they recognize as bad that's been my problem even as an athlete where I I you know as an athlete and massage therapist you know I'll I'll get to the level of pain that I haven't felt before and I'm like okay is this pain like as in injury pain or is this pain as in I haven't felt this before, but I can keep going. So 
that's been a real learning experience and and it's really helped me even work even closer with some of my clients um, you know some of my you know I have you know a lot, I have quite I have several ultra runner clients and things like that where they're you know they're doing 50 mile 100 mile runs um, and it, it's really helped me to understand some of that that feeling also because um, they're going far beyond their threshold. Yeah. <laughs> and do you think it's harder for a female therapist to break into the field just because of the? I mean, especially back in the day, it was all oh, male massage therapist or more in those areas and stuff like that. Have you noticed any of that? Um, I, as a massage therapist, I personally, I've been very fortunate where I haven't had an issue. Um, I did have an issue um, years ago when I was trying to work with some, with, um, when I was in Arizona. Um, I worked with the basketball team, and I was, um, but this was pre-massage therapy. And the football team, um, some of the some of the athletes weren't tr weren't respecting me uh, um, the way they probably should. And I and nobody was really standing up for me. Um, and uh, I kind of mentioned that um, I was hesitant, but I mentioned that to um, the trainer, one of the trainers that I was working with in the basketball. Uh, you know, and and that's why some colleges females work with females, males work with males. That's just what they do. Um, and, and basically, the, between the coach and the coaching staff, and you know, they they made sure they made sure that their athletes were treating me and every other female well. Um, you know, so I. Um, but yeah, I I definitely have I I notice that a lot. Um, I mean, it, you know, even when you know when you see or you hear about um, you know different massage therapists or you know trainers or this or that it's like it's it's very um, testosterone driven um, however I personally have never had a problem um, you know in that arena and then if you move, move into the other areas like with the triathletes the runners and, and things like that um, never never really had a problem as long as you know your stuff just like just like a you know man, woman, whoever, um, it it's as long as you know your stuff and you could de you demonstrate that you know your stuff, it, people aren't aren't gonna really care, um, which is really nice. Yeah, and, and then um, is, do you have any other uh, marketing advice and stuff for people to break into the field? And Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, I mean, business cards are great, but um, you know, kind of working with your website, getting out there. Um, you know, find out is there are there fun runs, you know, but getting out there, have give a seminar. Give a seminar over and it doesn't have to be anything intense. You don't even have to give away massages. Um, something that I've done, um, I I actually at a couple of different events, I did um, something where, yeah, I brought one of my therapists, she did some chair massage and things like that. But I I did a seminar about delayed onset muscle soreness and benefits of massage therapy, but also just about you know about the you know, typical injuries that massage therapy can help and blah blah blah. And, and I did this at, at a couple of different things. Um, one was at a tri club um, meet, one uh, meet up, one another time it was at you know um, a women's running event and a couple other things and you know and I I actually would do things where I'm trying to educate and I'm asking questions and then you know if somebody gets a question right they get to pick from a hat and they get like five dollars off a massage or ten dollars off a massage or you know different things like that so that's that's really you know people redeem things um, you know so we did stuff like that and um, but that that's you know um, or you know ten you know ten dollars off if you bring a, a friend in for a massage ten dollars off for each of you you know so that's also you know people refer people remember you if you do something um, you know things like that they'll trust me they'll they'll remember you um, you know it's sure a lot of like I said you know so there's going to be you know events um, that you might want to go out to um, and market yourself but make it you know have it be a smaller event. Um, or even, hey, if you're not sure about something, you know, if there happens to be a 5K and you don't necessarily know how to go about doing it, you know what? Instead of volunteering massage or giving away massage, volunteer to pack up packets, you know, the race day packets, or volunteer at a water station. You'll get to know people that are in the community, and and then you start to move your way in. Okay, that's that's a big, big, big thing. Um, get to know the people that are involved in the planning of these um, different events. Um, that's going to be very helpful too with marketing. 
Yeah, but and I've heard of um, some therapists. I mean, they're so set on they they want to do some. Um, they want to go to a professional team, and that's their only goal. But I've heard of some therapists will they'll go into high schools to start off just to get that experience and stuff. Do you recommend doing those things? Absolutely. Um, professional sports. I mean, really, to be honest, uh, you know, it, it's you could go for it, but uh, you know, uh, my I wish you all the best. And and they do hire, but um, it, it's 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 not easy. Um, high schools, high school, same thing. You know, they might not hire you, um, but guess what? You know, that's a great way to at least get started. You could do a proposal. Maybe you could even just volunteer, Re build the resume. Um, you know, and maybe eventually they will start paying you if you start. To, you know, start there, get into the colleges, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm happy to help. You know, write proposals and things like that. Um, and and also think about you know in so certain communities. You know, there's there's sports, but I mean, like here, for example, in Chicago, you know, there's you know, you also have to remember, you know, if you are getting involved in that, um, like even us for North at me at Northwestern, I had to have even though my license requires me to have a background check and things like that, I had to do another one. Um, they have they have to have on file another t not fingerprints or anything, but they had to do a DCFS background check as well because you're dealing with kids. Um, and and high schools probably will start to do that as well. Um, that's all has come about since the Penn State situation. Um, but you know, so there isn't just show up and start massaging a bunch of high school athletes. Sometimes it might be you know target the parents and explain to the parents that you want to you know teach some stretching if that's if you're allowed to do something like that in the state that you live in. Um, maybe it's you know teaching even partner stretching how they could stretch each other. Maybe it's maybe it is massaging and work you know um, talking to the coaches or if the, it's a school that's fortunate enough to have an athletic trainer that works with them or a floating athletic trainer. Here in Chicago, we have you know a bunch of schools um, that. I mean, gosh, you know, some of these, some of these kids, you know, they, they can't even afford shoes. You know, not that, you know. So therefore, their their aftercare might not even, you know. I mean, they're they're getting their shoes donated because, uh, you know, one of their a school in particular, one of their um, coaches happens to work at a running store also, and and people know this and they they donate shoes when they get new shoes. So and and one day they show up to go to a cross country meet. And the buses weren't there. He paid for cabs to get them all the way across town to to their meet, and and that's the thing. It, it's it, it's it's hard. So therefore, yeah, the money might not be there for massage therapy, but what a great way to build your resume if that's something you know that you want to do. I mean, and it only requires some consistency, but a couple hours a week here and there, um, and educate these kids. You know about it, and then there's other places that yeah maybe may you know hey jump on board. I mean a lot of the schools will hire you. Yep, and and then um, you mentioned about mentorship. So you mentor um, massage therapists to help break into the field and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a teacher at a school for quite some time, um, and you know even then I was mentoring, and I've I've mentored some of my graduates. Um, but yeah, through the years, I've also picked up other people, you know, via Facebook and things like that that I've met. Um, uh, some some fellow nerds as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy. I'm totally. Ha I I that's something that I, I enjoy doing. I mean, you know, I I it's something that you know, hey, it's for the greater good of massage therapy. You know, if if I don't, we don't want to lose people. You know, because they're you know, if you, we want you to be happy in the profession, and and that's. You know that's part of what Ryan does with Massage Nerd to help everybody, um, and that's something that I, I in turn like to do as well. You know, get you your clients, get you you know staying in the field. You know, don't you know get you happy with what you want to do, help you find your way. So um, I really enjoy that. Yeah, and with the recent stats that came out too, I mean the average therapist only stays in the field 24 months, and that's pretty shocking. I know. I think you know, and that's the thing. Whether it's you know burning out or you know, or or you know, burning through the paycheck to paycheck, and then paycheck to five days, and paycheck to three days because they're just not making enough. I mean, you know, it, it's it's you know, it's it's that's something that I've helped people with too. Is kind of figure out their timeline as far as you know, not necessarily a budget per se, but figure out their timeline. Um, you know, 
like for me, over the summer, a lot of people, I, it possibly was on Massage Nerd, a lot of people were saying, oh my gosh, it's so slow, it's so slow, crickets, crickets, crickets. I chimed in, I said something, you know, I, I mean, that, uh, hey, that's my, bu that's busy season. I mean, create your busy <laughs> season. That's a no-brainer busy season for me, but my off season happens to be January. Just because, you know, it's the, the start of the year, people are starting to get warmed up again and get into training, so, and, and December, January, kind of, and the holidays, but it's like, you know, running, for example, no matter where you are, I mean, we, we've had a rough winter, you know, we're here in Chicago and, and other communities where some of you are, and, you know, but people are still running, people are still active, and, and you know, it's, it's, so if you get involved in some groups, you're going to have, you're not going to have to worry about a slow season or this or that. Yep, definitely. And then, how do people get a hold of you then if um, they want more information? Um, you can find me on Facebook, of course, um, or you could um, email me at Urban Wellness Chicago, U R B A N W E L L N E S S Chicago at gmail dot com. Um, so those are probably the two best ways um, to get a hold of me. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. And thank you, everybody. And thank for you, everybody. Bye. <laughs> 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 Take care.